What's up guys, Sol here with another video for the Asus Strix G15. In this video I'm going to walk you through getting Linux installed on your Asus laptop. I'm Sol and let's do tech. Before we get started, I wanted to give recognition to the folks at asus-linux.org. It is thanks to this project that most of the Asus ROG functions work under Linux. So if you can, head on over to their site and show them some love. Also, if you find this content useful, please hit the subscribe button. It would help me to bring more content to you. I'm going to do the OS install portion on a virtual machine. This is so I can easily record it. Here I'm basically booting off the Fedora 37 USB. So here we'll have an option to try Fedora or install to hard drive. So we're going to click on install to start the installer. We'll select our language and hit continue. Next we're prompted with our time zone and keyboard layout and we're going to move on to our disk partitioning. So before we move on, it is important to understand what is actually going to happen in this stage. If you are using your original drive with Windows on it, then you can install Linux alongside Windows and dual boot, giving your primary drivers enough disk space to support both operating systems. You can also delete your Windows installation and just have Linux, but keep in mind that this would wipe out everything, so make sure you have a backup of your data and also a backup of the Windows Restore image so you can restore Windows if you find that Linux is not for you. A better option, and is the one that I'm using on my laptop, is to purchase a separate SSD for the Linux install. This way, you can swap out the drive if you ever need to go back to the Windows installation. So if you're following along, just note that the process I am describing here would wipe out the Windows and any data off the drive and would install a fresh copy of Linux. So here we have the drive, as you can see, it's only 20 gigs and I don't have that much free space left. Uh, the drive is checked, which means I'm going to be using it for my installation. And I want to free up the space, so I'm going to click on free up space down below. Next, I'm going to click on done. And at this point, I am prompted with all the partitions on the drive. I'm going to select delete all, which again will remove all the data off the drive. And I'm going to click on reclaim space. And now we're ready to start the installation, so I'll click on Begin Installation, and we'll let the installer uh, start working. So at this point, the installation is complete. We'll click on Finish Installation. And now we need to go up to the top right and click on the Power button, and we're going to reboot the system. So click on Power and Restart. So now with the system rebooted, we are going to continue the setup. So we'll click on the Start Setup here at the wizard. Here we have some uh, privacy settings. It's um, up to you to keep those on or turn them off if you like. And now we have a third-party repo that we're going to enable. And here we can add our online accounts. I'm going to skip that part. And we're going to create our user account. So type in my username and my super complicated password. At this point, we're all done, and we can click on Start Using Fedora Linux, and that will take us to the desktop. So here we are on the desktop, and we are prompted to take a tour, which I'm going to decline at this time. And one of the things I recommend to do on a fresh install system is go to the Software Manager and check for any updates. As you can see, we do have some updates, so we'll click Download and install the latest patches. Now click Restart and Update, 
to reboot the system and install the patches. At this point, I'm going to switch over to my actual laptop to show you guys all the steps on how to get all the ASUS utilities installed correctly. So we'll pop up our terminal and we'll start doing some command line stuff. One of the first things I want to do is disable the power saving mode on the Wi-Fi card. So we'll start by typing in this command, which will allow us to add an additional config file to the network manager. I'm going to use a VI here, but uh, you can use any editor you like to edit this file. So this is a brand new empty file and we're just going to add a config in it. Without this config, what happens with the Wi-Fi, it keeps on dropping. So it will, you know, connect for a while and then drop you. So this right here, this actually disables the power saving. So the Wi-Fi will stay connected. And here we go. Wi-Fi dot power save equal to, and I'm going to hit escape colon WQ. All right, now with that uh, new config file, all we have to do is we have to restart the network manager service. So here's the command for restarting the network manager. All right, with that task complete, I'm gonna clear the screen. And the next step is gonna be to add the repo for the ASUS uh, Linux uh, project. So here's the command to add it through DNF. And now that the repo has been added, I am going to actually install the utility. And here we go. This is going to install the utility and all the dependencies. I'm going to hit yes on that. And yes, on the fingerprint. Next, we need to enable the service. So when we boot the system, uh, the service will auto start. So I'm going to tap the command here to enable the service. And at this point, I would recommend either reboot or actually start this service. For me, it's already running, so I'm just going to clear. And now I'm going to type the command to install the ROG uh, control utility, the GUI. So with that installed and with the service running, um, I can now have a new icon and I go ahead and click on it. And there you go, the ROG Control Center now opens up and I can do various things in here. For example, I can set the BIOS option for the charge capacity. So I'm gonna lower that down to 80%. Here's our fan curves. I'm gonna go ahead and enable all these profiles. And here we have the control for the keyboard. This will allow us to assign colors to the zones on the keyboard. And depending on the type of machine you have, you could have a per key RGB or four zones. It will uh, determine that based on your machine type. So you can control all that from here. Next step is we need to install some GNOME extensions. So we'll head over to the GNOME extension site. The first time you hit the site, you do have to enable the browser extension, which I'm doing right now.
And once the browser extension is enabled, I'll go ahead and refresh the site. And now I can install the GNOME extensions. And the first extension I'm going to install is the Super GFX CTL extension. This gives you access to control your integrated, dedicated, or hybrid config for the GPU. The next extension we're going to install is the Power Profile Indicator. The Power Profile Indicator is an easy way to see which power profile you're currently on, whether you're on quiet, balance, or performance mode. The next extension we're going to install is the App Indicator. The App Indicator adds a system tray icon to GNOME, which the ROG control panel takes advantage of and adds additional functionality. With the App Indicator extension installed, I now have access to menus from the ROG control panels, such as the panel overdrive and my GPU mode. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some key binding to allow the keyboard shortcuts uh, to work, just like in the intro video. So I'll go over to settings and head down to keyboard. And then we're going to go to customize shortcuts. And I'm going to go down to custom shortcuts. I'm going to click on add shortcut. And this first shortcut is going to be for the ROG uh, control panel. So I'm going to give it a name and type the command to launch the ROG GUI. And then I'll click on set shortcut and then on my keyboard, I'll hit the control panel key. So now whenever I hit that key on the keyboard, the control panel will open up. The next key binding I'm gonna add is for the fan shortcut, which will allow us to cycle through the three different modes, which are quiet, balance, and performance for those uh, fan curves that we saw earlier in the ROG control panel. So for the actual physical key to use here, you can either use the function key and F5 or use the dedicated uh, fan key. They're both exactly the same shortcut. And now when I hit that fan key on the keyboard, it actually cycles through those profiles and you can see that through the indicator up on top. And the last key binding I'm gonna add is gonna be for the Aura RGB keyboard profile. So uh, this one right here, will I also cycle through the various profiles that we set up in the ROG GUI for the RGB keyboard. So for this keyboard shortcut, I'm going to use the function F4 key, and that takes care of that. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sol, and I'll see you next time.